Hey, if you ever uttered the phrase, I have that on vinyl, you're in the right place. For what it's worth, I'm Murray Valeriano. Welcome to the only music and comedy game show that matters. Today, I have three contestants who will test their musical trivia knowledge and their quick wit, but only one will rise above the rest to be crowned the king or queen of rock. Let's meet our players today. Man, I am excited today. I'm excited for, I, I'm, I'm a fan of all three of you guys. I'm going to go right out and say it. I'm a fan of all three of you guys. Uh, joining us today, the 40-year-old boy himself, the host of the 40-year-old boy podcast, Mike Schmidt. Mike, thanks a lot for coming, man. Murray, dude, thank you for asking me. I've been waiting. I'm excited to be a part of this. Oh man, I thank you for coming back. I do, I do know you're on one of my episodes that I ruined and had to dispose of. So I'm glad you actually took time and came back. And let's let your audience know I destroyed everybody in that episode and I was hilarious. Just in case things go awry today, I was great <laughs> once before. Okay. I'm sure you'll remind us throughout the show. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh joining us uh from the Great White North, right? Is that is that insulting to Canadians when we say no, that? Or is... We're happy with that. Great White okay. North. The Attica, North America, that'll work fine. <laughs> All right. Host of the ongoing history of new music, Alan Cross. Thank you for joining us, sir. I am happy to have found your message in my junk folder. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> could, you, could you point that out to my wife, too? Because it seems to go into my wife. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to say this, and I, I said this off air. I am such a fan of your podcast. Um, I, 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 it's great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for doing the show. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. And uh, I'm not a big fan of the next podcast. Um, <laughs> Pat Francis, host of the Rock Solid podcast. How are you, sir? I'm good. And I just want to say that all of your wife's emails make it into my box. <laughs> hey, as long as you don't make it into my wife's box. You know I saw I mean? it coming. Hey, I was, oh, I come was on. off of it. Come I teed on. it up. I, I teed it up. Alan Cross. <laughs> it was hanging there like a tether ball, and I refused to smash it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Low fast. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, Pat Francis has a for what it's worth pin. Um, I know you probably don't want to give me your address, Alan, but I'll be happy to send you one, <laughs> especially uh, okay. after that last joke. <laughs> Fine. I mean, I want to memorialize this in some way because uh, I won't be doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing is Alan thinks that's his decision. <laughs> 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 All right, before we get started, there are a couple things you guys need to know. I am going to start you off with an advance of 25 points. All right, it's up to you to add on to those points through strategic wagers and correct answers. Okay, but be careful. If you get any questions wrong, you could lose those points. Are you guys ready to rock? Woo! Yes, sir. Let's do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's go to the rock wall. There are six categories in the rock wall. Each category has one question. Once you are assigned a category, you can wager up to five points of your advance. Once you wager, I'll read that question. If you get that question right, you win those points. If you get that question wrong, you lose those points. Let's see what the categories in the rock wall are today. Roll of the dice, Candio, middle of the road, ad rock, Radiohead, and friend of the devil. Mm. All categories are assigned randomly. We're going to start with the 40-year-old Mike Schmidt. Let's shuffle the rock wall. Friend of the devil, Mike, how much of your advance are you willing to wager? One to I'm five gonna wager, I'm going to wager five points from the jump, sir. Let's start this game right. I love it. Balls to the wall, out of the gate. I love it. Friend of the devil. Friend of the except, devil. Except, except. What? Yes. No, oh, no, no, said, no, no, no. That's just the, it's just the category. Oh, that's okay. Category. Sorry. You said balls to the wall. I was immediately I know. I get answering. it. I get right, it. No, I understand. I understand. <laughs> I understand. We're all looking for that German metal band. I get it. All right. <laughs> Although denied by the Eagles, it is rumored that which cult leader and author of the Satanic Bible appears in the gatefold of Hotel California? Hmm. Now, as the hmm. son of a preacher, man, I love this question. I love Certainly. this question. Well, I can't blame it. Well, as an avowed Satanist, I also love this question. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to mention the name of one Anton LaVey. Oh, Anton LaVey, correct, sir. Excellent, correct. Good job. That was great. Uh, mm -hmm. I looked like Alan Cross knew that. Pat, did you know that? I thought it was Ted Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take that. Oh. We'll take that. <laughs> All right, excellent. Five points out of the gate for Mike Schmidt. Alan Cross, up to you. Let's shuffle the rock wall. 
Roll of the dice, Alan Cross. Roll of the dice. How much of your advance are you willing to wager? One to five points. Well, I can't be a pussy, so I'll go with five points too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right. Here. Well, that balls to the wall for Alan Cross. Roll of the dice. Which shock comic played a role in EMF's 1991 number one song, Unbelievable, by having part of his act sampled? Wow. Um... Okay, British band. Yeah, oh. now you're, a, I'm no. sorry? Which shock comic? I'll go with uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, buddy. You're correct, sir. <laughs> you are correct. Yes, yes. Roll of the dice, a little hint in the title there, sir. <laughs> Pat Francis. Yes. Let's shuffle the rock wall. All righty. Radiohead, sir. Radiohead, how much of your advance are you willing to wager? Oh, look, the other guys went five. I'm going to go five just for the hell of it. But All right. the category is not uh, making me uh, feel good. All right. Well, this question might make you feel good. All right. Although it didn't get much radio play, Jim Morrison recorded Your Lost Little Girl while his girlfriend Pam did what to him? <laughs> now, how are my kids supposed to watch this when I say <laughs> giving head? Oh, that is correct. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, it's a very, I, I am a 12 year old. I will admit that. I am a 12 year old. That is great. excellent. Five, five, five out of the gate. All right, let's go to back to Mike Schmidt and let's shuffle yes. the rock wall. Candio, sir. Candio, how much of your advance are you willing to wager? We're, we're, uh, I'm willing to wager. Uh, well, is it multiplied or just five again? Five, one five, to five, sir. One five, to five it is. Let's five it. Five it is. Balls to the wall. Let's do this. Candio. Despite being considered rock and roll excess, but ended up making perfect sense, Van Halen notoriously had which color M&M removed from their green room rider? Uh, well, you couldn't know this, Murray, but Van Halen, of course, my favorite band of all time. Is and that really your band? It is. It is my. That's my favorite band of all time. Literally. Oh, interesting. Uh, the first band that was mine, not my older brother, not my parents. That was the the one that I found and loved on my own. All and right. uh, and M and M's. Surprisingly, the first candy I found and loved on my own. So this this question. <laughs> this is perfect. Could not be this more of a perfect. layup. <laughs> uh, no brown M and M's. No brown M and M's. David Allen Cross gives you the thumbs up. Correct, sir. It's correct. You are you are, sir, a perfect rock wall. Thank you, sir. Wow. Happy to do it. That that story. Now, do you know why that story actually happened? I do not. Why is that, sir? I'm sorry. I know. Okay. No, Alan. What is it, Alan? Alan? Oh, okay. Because when Van Halen rolled into town, they found that the promoters were not following the rules and the procedures outlined in their backstage rider so they slipped this one in just to see if anybody was paying attention they didn't really expect there to be no brown m&ms in the bowl they just wanted to see they wanted to test the promoter to see exactly how closely they were reading the rider nice oh that's smart you well, know who else does knowledge. that who's that cartographers mm. they, they they design their maps and then they will put in fake streets so when somebody uses it without copyright, ah. they can go to the court and go, I'm sorry, Alan really? Crossway does not exist oh, yet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I, All I right. You're going to say they drew M&Ms in Luxembourg or something. I'm like, what the hell? Just brown ones. Just brown All right, ones. Nice. All right. Excellent job. Mike Schmidt, Alan Cross, let's shuffle the rock wall. Ad rock, sir. Ad rock. How much of your advance are you willing to wager? One to five points. Five, easy five. Oh, easy five. Yeah. Mm, I like the confidence. Big dick Canadian confidence right there. Let's go. Add rock. In 1967, Simon and Garfunkel performed at the Monterey Pop Festival. The same year, Art Garfunkel earned his degree in what from Columbia University? Okay, wait a second. What does this have to do with ad rock? He'll explain when you get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Art Garfunkel, degree. Um, he wasn't a music guy. He was a literary guy. I'm going to go say that he was a, some sort of fine arts guy. Um, Columbia University. Uh, writing. Mm, sorry, that is incorrect. Add rock mathematics. Really? 
man, at this time I'm saying yes, but now I'm questioning myself. <laughs> okay, well, no, you're the host. You should know. I know, oh. I know, I know. Uh, Ellen, don't author... say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't mean, know. I, I, that's, a good, that's a good question. Did not know that. All right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and say it's true. Matt Francis, let's go to the rock wall. <laughs> middle of the road, middle of the road, right. sir. How much of your advance are you willing to wager? Well, that's exactly how I live my life, middle of the road. So let's go with five. <laughs> five points. Balls to the wall. Five points. Here we go. In what order do the Beatles cross the street on the cover of their 1969 album, Abbey Road? Oh, my God. This is going to be such a guess. All right. I think Alan's eyes lit up when he saw this. <laughs> okay. First is John Lennon. Second is Ringo Third is Paul, and bringing up the rear is George. It's my final answer. I'm going correct, sir. Ooh. I am going correct. Good guess. Well, well, I, it's my favorite Beatles album, and I also I have a coaster made of that uh, album cover also. So I just had to, I had to think. Please, All more right. facts a grandpa would care about. Let me tell you something. The thing that was confusing me is I wasn't sure if Paul was second or third. I knew who was at the end. The caboose is Harrison and the engine is Lennon. But then in the middle of the fun cars, I didn't know. Apparently, All right. Excellent, excellent middle, rock wall round. Excellent rock wall round. Let's tally up these scores. Let's see who's winning this thing. I'm losing. This is... <laughs> By the way, I've, I've, I've looked it up. Uh, Garfunkel got a BA in art history in 1965. The mathematics degree was 67. So I concede defeat. All right. All right. You, you, know, you know, I'm telling you, not just anybody can write and host their own online game show. And you're <laughs> proving it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. An excellent, excellent rock wall round. Let's tally up these scores. Let's see who's winning this thing. All right, the scores are in, the scores are in, the scores are in. We have Alan Cross in second place. Why am I starting with second place? He has 25 points right where you started, sir, right where you started. But we got two more games. I think you can really rack up some points in the next two games. Eh. Uh, tied for first. Tied for first. We got the obnoxious 40-year-old boy, Mike Schmidt, and the equally obnoxious Pat Francis at 35. 10 points. It's a neck and neck race, but I'm feeling this is still anybody's game. Mm. Let's go to the mashup. <laughs> Today in the mashup, it's Rough Riders. We all heard those crazy stories about artists who put those wacky stuff on their riders. I'm thinking Eminem having a wooden koi pond constructed so he could watch the colorful fish float around before he goes on crazy players i want you to come up with a band and tell me what you think might be on their rider if i like what you have to say i'll give you five points if i don't like what you have to say no points mike schmidt we'll start with you what band did you pick well i'll just tell you first it was a huge mistake to start with me that's all just for the other guys i'm just letting wow. you know that right now. that wasn't my first mistake on this show with you <laughs> it won't be your last <laughs> does that mean because um, you wrote so much that you're going to eat up the rest of the show uh, it means I just wrote amazing stuff that you couldn't possibly hope to match, but you'll get oh, your five right. points anyway, because Murray's your pal. Um, so get ready for <laughs> overwriting people. Uh, I, you know, I, I actually murdered you in this the last time you'll remember, but anyway, folks, I never did this. I didn't do this last time. I, I murdered you in this round when you had to create your own stuff. I sang songs. I dominated you. You left in tears. Well, I'm glad guys, take it to the bicycle racks after school. Can we get on with the show? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I don't know if you've heard about this, but with COVID, a lot of bands mm -hmm. are canceling tours. A lot of bands are postponing tours, but a lot of bands are organizing package tours so they can get on the road together and have a bunch of different fans come together and watch all these different bands in one venue. Okay. So if you didn't hear, there is a package tour right now that involves Bow Wow Wow, Def Leppard, and ABBA. Okay. <laughs> and i've happened to get a hold of the writer for the tour what? not just the band the tour the tour right. writer yes and they're each band is oh. individual they all look they all have their own sure. requests which as they should uh bow wow wow is opening of course clearly yeah uh and uh and because they're opening they don't get a really big writer they only get to make one request really and uh, their request for bow wow wow and their writer was candy Okay. <laughs> band right. will prefer candy on the beach, but band will accept candy wrapped in a sweater. Okay. Excellent. 
Def Leppard <laughs> is also on the road. They're middling <laughs> on this tour. Oh. As they should. Uh, and they, for some reason, they're on a Star Trip. They have a large rider, which I was shocked by. But this is, again, <laughs> they were a huge band in the 80s. Why not bring that with them on this tour again? Going on the road, meeting their fans. Uh, here's their rider. One glove, right hand. Four pints ale for Rick. Not that Rick, the other Rick. If anyone named Billy arrives, they must be searched by security. No exceptions. Anything with a Union Jack. Ashtrays, donuts, seriously, anything. Four pints lager for Rick. Not that Rick, the other Rick. 200 pounds sugar. Band will provide further instruction upon arrival. Of course. Of course. <laughs> one Unta, one Gleben, one Glauten. Band will provide own Globin. ABBA, of course, is headlining this tour. People didn't see them getting back together, but they wanted to see their fans one more time. COVID showed them how much they love touring, and they only have one request in their rider. No brown Moominflorgans. <laughs> Thank you. All right, my only question is, what lasts longer, ABBA's set or that bit? <laughs> <laughs> you said fucking Gil Martin did 30. That's true. It's true, Gilbert. Dude, I got to go. Five points. Excellent job. I love your approach to it. That was great. Good You're job, very nice. Smith. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good job. I'm sorry for all that time we had to spend with that. Alan Cross, sir. Um, A band I, rider for which band, sir? Um, well, this will be for the Foo Fighters. And I apparently oh, uh, misunderstood the concept here because mine is based in fact. Oh, and it is a question back to you. So I did some research of some okay. actual Foo Fighters riders. These are legitimate, 100% real. And I've pulled out this particular question. All of the following items, except one, are specifically forbidden from the backstage area of any and all Foo Fighters concerts. In other words, which of the following five items are is permitted by the band okay i again, just want, i just want to go on record saying i love this i love this this is this is great so i didn't make anything up i went to the source so one of these things is not allowed uh sorry one of these things is permitted is permitted backstage at a foo fighters concert are you ready okay uh pasta Sliced roast beef, turkey meatloaf, garden gnomes, <laughs> or plastic utensils. And let me just repeat that. I, I got it wrong. Only one of those is permitted backstage. Pasta, sliced roast beef, turkey meatloaf, garden gnomes, or plastic utensils. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I think I know it. This is this is my show. I will take the first guess, Pat. One is allowed. One, One is allowed is okay. All right. I'm I'm not gonna say pasta because they're all in really good shape. Uh, I'm not gonna say garden gnomes because they're creepy and they fly around the room when you're not looking at them. Um, could you read off the other three, please? I'm sorry. Turkey meatloaf, plastic utensils, sliced roast beef. Allowed. Allowed. I'm I'm going plastic utensils because I feel like they're uh, environmentally friendly. Pat, okay. your guess. I think it's garden gnomes because they're they have a wacky sense of humor. Okay, Mike Schmidt, your guess. Well, I'm going to guess, uh, and, and because uh, he's a foodie, our friend Dave Grohl, so he would never use plastic utensils. He would never have mm -hmm. turkey meatloaf. And I'm going to opt with what Pat said regarding the pasta. Uh, so I'm going to go with sliced roast beef is allowed backstage. Well, I'm afraid you're all incorrect. <laughs> Pasta is something that they do not want under any circumstances because it cheaps out uh, what they're paying the, the caterer. They don't want pasta. Sliced roast beef gets slimy. So uh, I'm reading here, unless you slaughtered it yourself, no sliced roast beef. It's a tricky substance. Please don't let it get slimy. So no sliced roast beef. 
Garden gnomes, I think that goes without saying. Yes, they do fly around the room. They're dangerous. Plastic okay. utensils are not allowed. They will allow for solo cups, but not plastic utensils. They're on the road. They want to eat with real cutlery. So the only thing that they will allow from that list is turkey meatloaf. In fact, oh. any, anything served as a loaf is good for them. And as a bonus, as much stinky cheese as you could possibly bring to the show. All right. That was fantastic. I loved it. That was great. That was, yeah. I, I, you said any loaf. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, Southern delicacy of pimento loaf. I, that would fall under the slimy meats. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point, sir. Alan Cross, five points. That was fantastic. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So, way, to, way to misread it and then fucking knock it out of the park. I love it. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Pat Francis. And, and oh, Alan, the perfect length for that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Francis, what do you have for a band writer, sir? All right, so I chose. Go ahead, Alan. Oh, I'm sorry. Enough with a piece of sushi. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Not allowed backstage at the Foo Fighters concert. <laughs> Pat Francis. I am going to check out the rider for a band called Huey Lewis in the News. Oh, all right. All right. I'm so, a fan. I don't think you're a fan, but I'm a fan. Oh, I don't know that I'm. Uh, well, let's see. <laughs> let's check out the rider and see. Then we'll decide. All right, Murray, the band's biggest album is called Sports, but ironically, the writer says they will only play songs without balls. Okay. So, any song they've ever recorded. <laughs> All right. <laughs> one diss one dis on Huey Lewis is your whole writer? One diss on Huey Lewis is your whole writer? No, I have more. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, the band will sign items after the show. Okay. They will only sign things that came from a medical supply store, like canes, commode chairs, or those pre-cut tennis balls that go in the bottom of your walker. Okay. <laughs> the band wants 75% of the house seats have to be sold to dads that are 55 years or older, while the other 25% of the seats are held for Jimmy Buffett fans who are tired of rocking too hard. <laughs> and last but not least, very important, no brown M&Ms in the Viagra Bowl. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Although I disagree with your disdain for Huey Lewis in the news, I am a fan. I'm going to give you five points for that, Woo! sir. But funny. Good spirit. There you go. All right. An excellent round of the mashup, you guys. An excellent round. It's a perfect score across the board on this game. Let's figure out these scores. Let's see who's winning this thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the scores are in. If the scores weren't in, would I be able to do this? No, I don't think so. All right. We're, we're progressing at a steady pace, at a steady pace in second place. <laughs> it's second that's, place. A, that's what you're looking for in a television show. We are progressing at a steady pace, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, on the edge of your seat with our progression pace. <laughs> we have Alan Cross with 30 points. Alan Cross with 30 points. Tied for first place, the 40-year-old Mike Schmidt. And the 57-year-old Pat Francis. That would be true. <laughs> All right. That's true. But I'm telling you guys, it's still anybody's game. That is, a, there's only a five-point difference in this. And it can be, it, that can be remedied. That could be buried. I could, uh, points could be added up in the next round. And the next round is the jam. Let's go to the jam. Woo! Today in the jam at School of Rock. Sure, they're famous and adored now, but rock stars started off just like you and me. Pimpled face kids, headset, braces, possible mullet. How do I know this? Because I scoured the internet and I found school pictures of today's rock stars. Players, I'm gonna show you a school picture. I want you to figure out who that person became. And when you have the right answer, buzz in. I'll give you five points for a right answer. I'll give you no points for a wrong answer. Let's check out the first school picture. Oh, got Pat Francis, Alan Cross, nothing from Schmitty. Pat Francis, what's your guess? Michael Stipe. Oh, that is correct. Michael Stipe, sir. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Talk about oh, hair Jesus. to no hair. Still a good looking guy, though. Still a good looking guy. Eh. Let's go to the next school picture. Oh, this is a, oh, Schmitty's out of the gate. Pat Francis is out of the gate. Schmitty, Mike Schmidt, I'm going with you, sir. Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. 
I don't know how you pulled that, but that is correct. That's You're goddamn right it is. Oh, my God. Did you know that, or was that a guess? No. I, I mean, I, I have no idea. None. Okay. That's fine. Oh, wow. That is he looks way better then than she does now. Oh, my Christ. Oh, right. Ooh, Come we on. Have there. Oh. They have no there. They have no shame, Alan. They have no shame. You're the only one. You're bringing, you're the only one bringing any kind of dignity and class to the show. <laughs> Alan Cross, Pat Francis, and nothing from Schmitty. What do you got, Alan? I think I'm wrong because I noticed he has a right ear. I thought that was Paul Stanley. Oh, that's a good guess. Is that what you're going with? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Let him guess 10 names. So that can't be him. All right. Who are you going to say? I'll pass it along to somebody else. Mm. Uh, looks like uh, Pat Francis is in there. Murray, I will tell you that this gentleman enjoys loving an elevator. That's Steven Tyler. It is. Look at the lips. Oh, yeah. The lips are the giveaway. Five points for Pat Francis. Look at that physique. Jesus Christ. He's older than all of us. Yeah, well, that'll keep you nice and thin. <laughs> it's true, too. <laughs> I suck at this. I have facial blood. <laughs> <laughs> the worst possible category for me and i'm gonna to have to do a lot of explaining to people as to why i suck so much at this well i think this is a tough one this is a tough one uh we got one buzzer in with mike schmidt i buzzed in i know but are you gonna say anything schmitty oh i all right yeah i thought you had to call on people and stuff that's cool yeah one buzzer in with mike schmidt you know what i'm gonna go with kelly clarkson <laughs> oh that is incorrect Ugh. alan cross you're second Belinda Carlisle. That's a good guess, but that is incorrect. Can Pat Francis pull it out? I'm going to guess Natalie Maines. I got to say, all, well, two of those were great. I don't know if Schmidt was kind of blue, but that is incorrect. That is. Wow. Gwen Stefani. Nice. Okay. Gwen Stefani. What happens when you have a lot of surgery? Okay. There <laughs> <laughs> oh. we go. Out of the game. I can't believe nobody's buzzing in on this. I one. did. There it is. Pat Francis. This guy loves to record songs while he's getting head. <laughs> Jim Morrison. It's the eyebrows and the forehead. Yeah, you now that I see you say it, I and I see it. Let's go to the next one. A few more. Let's go to the next school picture. <laughs> Got it. Pat Francis. This guy's favorite drink is a rusty cow. That's Murray <laughs> Valoriano. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> All right. That's rough, dude. That <laughs> yeah, now the this, absolute, you, this look absolute, you look a, a million times better than that photo. Do you have a rash or something? What are you, what are you scratching there? Yeah. <laughs> Just the absolute disgust and disdain on Schmidt and Alan Cross's face when it was revealed. See, these look all familiar to me, but I have absolutely. I'm in. I know who it is. Call on me. Uh, all right. Well, you are in first, Mike Schmidt. <laughs> Hatfield. It yes. is James Hatfield. Yes, yes you're right. We got Pat Francis. I'm going to say the worst live singer in the history of rock and roll. That is the fat fuck known oh, as Vince Neil. Oh, uh, we're just going to call him Vince Neil, but yes, keep your opinions of Vince Neil down. So I yes. hate him. I All hate right, Vince that's Neil. fine. We don't want to hear that. All right. Yeah. That is the school of rock. Excellent round. Let's rally up. Let's get these points going. Let's see who won this thing. The points are what this was such a fun game, guys. Thank you so much for playing today. <laughs> you were great. Alan, you came in with 30 points. Not a bad showing for your first time. Not a bad showing. One question right. <laughs> it was a good quite quality question. It was a quality question, but Jesus. But right. I learned I learned that roast beef can get slimy from you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, coming in second place, the 40-year-old boy, Mike Schmidt, losing right. his crown. He said he won this thing before, but he got the he got the floor mopped with him. Terrible. The floor mopped with maybe 
maybe a for what it's worth score record. There you go. 65 points for Pat Francis, host of the Rock Solid Podcast. Congratulations, sir. You are this week's king of rock. There is none higher. I thought we could be the queen or king. Oh, that's true. That's true. Would you like All to right. be the queen of rock? I would like to be. Okay. You are the this week's queen of rock. There is none higher. All right. Hey, listen, I want to thank you guys for uh, playing. Uh, Pat Francis, where can we find you? Um, you can uh, listen to the Rock Solid Podcast. Go to rocksolidpodcast.com and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Rock Solid Show. Excellent. Mike Schmidt, where can we find you? Uh, I have the 40 year old boy podcast available at iTunes and Spotify, wherever you can find your finer podcasts. And you can follow me at Twitter uh, at, uh, at the 40 year old boy. And you can find me at Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok at Mike 40 YOB, Mike 40 YOB. And I'm at facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. Almost as long as your band writer. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. Alan Cross, sir, where can we find you? You can find uh, the Ongoing History of New Music podcast. It's available in all the podcast platforms. I also have a website called A Journal of Musical Things that gets updated every single day, 365 times a year, uh, with uh, music news and information. Plus, you can find me on Twitter, at Alan Cross, and also on Instagram, Alan Cross X. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I want to I want to thank Pat Francis. I want to thank Mike Schmidt. I want to thank Alan Cross. Hey, and I want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and check out our new Patreon page. There's a couple of levels on there. Uh, you can get prizes. You can uh, uh, answer trivia questions. And there might be an opportunity for you to be a participant on this show. All right. I also got to thank the eye in the sky, Walker Yule. Remember when life gets you down, remember what Prince said, shaboogie. All right, for what it's worth, I'm Murray Valeriano. Good night, Ontario. We love you. <laughs>